So as we continue, we understand the evolution of the swing, we just refresh your mind. We started with a shepherd in the 1300s, knocking pebbles away with his upturned crook. He then evolved to hold the crook with two hands and he hit the pebble further and then he started to use his body. And at that point he needed posture. Now, initially, like Lee Trevino and Seve Ballesteros, that Scottish shepherd only had one club with which to learn all his golfing skills. What happened was in the midst of time, golf clubs were designed of various lengths, weights and lofts to do lots of different jobs. There's a huge amount of choice. If you go to the museum in St Andrews and look at ancient golf clubs from the 1700s, they're remarkably made out of hickory shafts and persimmon heads with bits of horn and ivory and brass and lead. Quite remarkable constructions that did a very effective job. At one stage, Walter Hagen in the 30s had about 45 sets of 45 irons in his playing set, simply because he'd had an endorsement for almost every one. It almost killed his caddy. But there came a time when the governing body, the RNA, decided that 14 clubs was your maximum. And we ended up with clubs made out of wood, and we call them woods even to this day, even though the heads are metal. And then we had clubs made of iron. And they did different jobs and different lengths. So if we go back to that Scottish caddy and his subsequent followers and relations, they started to build more and more golfing tools, you might say, golfing equipment. Now, when you play with a golf club made of hickory, the shaft is very twisty and torquey. So the posture in the early golfing days was fairly upright and the swing looked wristy and like this because the swing was evolving due to the use of hickory shafts. And what you can see in the early golfing pictures is posture was not greatly inclined. And because of that, the hands and the arms dominated the movement. Even in the early 1900s, the male golfers still played with Oxford collars and jackets and the ladies in full length skirts and golfing attire. And therefore, they didn't have much bodily freedom to coil and rotate. Most of the golf swing was hands, arms and wrists. And what you can see through the 1900s is a progression. We can start with Bobby Jones in the 20s. His posture was here. Ben Hogan leaned a little bit further. Jack Nicholas further still. Nick Faldo even more, and to Tiger Woods. So there was an evolution of spinal angle that started with hickory and evolved through with steel. So an athletic posture, as described by Tiger Woods or Nick Faldo, or what we'd copy in the modern era, because the shaft has evolved to be made of steel or graphite, is much more stable. So, in the early stages, the golf swing lived here, upright and wristy. That is what Jim Hardy would call the two-piece or two-plane swing. So as the swing develops, the posture improves and now the rotation of the body occurs and you can see the power and the accuracy start to occur. So posture allows an increase of power. It's a fascinating thing that the playing set has evolved over, over so many hundreds of years. The longest club, the driver, rests here, the six arm rests here, and the wedge. So although we've been playing golf for hundreds of years, the human body hasn't changed at all. It's basically as it was. And that's why golf clubs haven't changed greatly. The length of the driver has stayed very constant. The length of the sandwich or a putter hasn't changed much over the last hundred years. Because the human body determines the type of club that you're going to use, the length and the shape of it. And in this modern era, we can change the neck of the club to suit your body and we get the lie of the club appropriate to your physique. But I think you can see that with the driver, I lean forward the, the least. A six iron, I lean forward a bit more. And with a wedge, I lean forward the most. So there we have it. There's an evolution of the posture. We started upright, we tipped forward a bit for hickory, and then steel shafts came in, the body angle increased, and our swings became more upright, but more rotational in their uprightness. In the early days of hickory, it was mainly hands, arms, and wrists. 
And in the modern era, the body now complements the movement of the hands, arms and wrist, and the power that is generated, apart from the equipment itself, the modern golf ball is being hit prodigious distances because the movement is now so athletic. In the early days of golf, it was mainly shoulders, arms and wrists.